Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to deal with other names. We're going to see how to handle maiden names, nicknames, middle names, and whatever other names you can think of in Microsoft Access. Today's question comes from Chester in New London, Connecticut, one of my gold members. Chester says, I'm making some modifications to your excellent genealogy database. Thanks for the compliment. I've added a field for maiden name. How can I get that to display as first, and then in parentheses maiden, and then last in my reports, if the person is female? Well, Chester, I can definitely show you how to do that, but let me give you my thoughts first. First off, I personally think that the term maiden name is a little outdated. Some people even find it condescending and sexist. Without going into all that, though, I prefer using other last name or even last name at birth, which is especially good if you're doing genealogy. Another reason why is that a different birth name doesn't necessarily only apply to women. Some men, for example, change the name when they marry. My fiance is still trying to get me to take her last name. He thinks D'Angelo is a lot cooler than Rost. I think Rost is awesome. It's nice and short and sweet, and I've had it for 50 years. So no, I'm keeping it. <laughs> Also, adopted children sometimes keep their birth name, and they want to be able to track both for legal reasons. Now, while we're at it, the same techniques I'm going to show you in this video can also be used to track nicknames and middle names. Now, why is nickname one word, but middle name is not? Or maiden name or other name? Well, because nickname has been around since like the 1300s, and it's a misspelling of something from Old English, and it's crazy. I'll put a link down below. You can check out what I found on Wikipedia. But yeah, nickname is one word, middle name is two words. I'll also show you how to abbreviate if you want to put in the full middle name and then abbreviate it like James T. Kirk. And plus also, you might have multiple other names if a person's been married a few times, for example, and you want to track all of them. So you could put them in the other names field and then put those in parentheses like Beverly, Bev, nickname, Picard, married name in an alternate future. Remember the season finale, or the series finale, right? And then she was, Howard was her birth name, maiden name if you prefer, and then she was married to Jack Crusher. So she's got two other names. Her legal name is Picard in this alternate future, right? So you got nickname, you got legal last name, and you got other last names that the person has had in the past. So there's all kinds of crazy things you can do. And you can do whatever you want. It's your database. You don't have to do it the way that I'm doing it, but I'm going to show you a couple different techniques and my job is to show you how to put different Legos together, and you can arrange them however you want. It's your database, right? All right, so how do we do all this stuff? Well, the interesting thing is, and this is why I always use the Lego analogy, I've already covered the techniques to show you how to do this stuff in a couple of my other videos. But in this video, I'm going to put those together in a different way. Like I said, playing with access is like playing with Legos. Different stuff, you know, the techniques. Now you just got to arrange them in a different way. And I learned things like this too myself. I, I look at, you know, some things I see people do online. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. That's this plus that put together a different way. So, okay. So first you need calculated fields because we're going to use a calculated query field to put these different fields together. First name, last name, nickname, and so on. So go watch this video. All right, next up, string concatenation, putting together first name and last name, for example. That's, that's concatenation go watch this if you've never done that before go watch the double double quotes video yeah i gotta update the screen for this one the top says concatenation but the other one really does concatenation this one is about the double double quotes problem this is a big one a lot of people get stuck on this when you put double quotes inside of quotes you got to use double double quotes i'm gonna do some of that today go watch this video for more information and finally go watch my video on null math learn how null values work when you add them together Okay, in a nutshell, if you add null to anything, the result is null. And we're going to use that. And by knowing this technique, we can do a lot of this stuff without any functions at all. In fact, we can do all of this without any functions at all. The only function we'll need is if you want to take that left character for the abbreviation for the middle name. But you'll see what I'm talking about in just a minute. So go watch all of these videos. These are all free. I'll put links down below that you can click on. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch any of those if you don't know what any of this stuff is. And then come on back. I'll wait for you. Okay, so here I am in my tech help free template. This is a free database. You can download a copy of that off my website. Here's my customer table. And generally, for my customers especially, I only track first name and last name. For what I do, computer training, that's all I need. 
I am seriously going to add a nickname field, though, to my database very soon because I've been using a notes field because right in the middle of the customer form like I've got here, right, I keep a little notes field so I can see whenever I pull someone's record up because if someone's name is David, you don't want to just call them Dave. Some people might get offended. I've got friends, for example. I have a friend named James. He does not like to be called Jim. His name is James. He wants to be called James. That's fine. Me, my name is Richard. I don't care. Call me Rick. Call me Rich. I had a coach that called me Richie. Uh, I don't. I don't really get call me Dick if you want. My best friend growing up, we were. I was. We were both Richards. I was Ricky. He was Dicky. So I. Don't, I really don't care. Doesn't matter to me. If you're gonna call me by my proper title on the website, it's Fleet Admiral. But I know, <laughs> just kidding. Anyway, so I put like you know, if someone it's okay, I'll put like Rick here. But I want to add that as a nickname field to my database. So when it comes up and when I hit reply, it automatically goes boop and it pops their nickname in there. Okay. So, how do we do all that with this? Well, first we got to add some fields to our table for whatever you want to track. So, let's go to design view. And I'm going to throw in here, let's insert a row. We got middle name. Okay, then we got last name. I'm going to throw nickname in there. Insert another row. And you can put them at the bottom and drag them up or whatever. Nickname. Okay, and then other last name at the bottom. Insert rows. Other last name, or like I said, if you're doing genealogy, you want to put birth name in there, that's fine. Other last name, to me, you can put multiple names in there and just put a comma between them. Yes, I know it's not proper relational database. You want to have a separate table. If if this is a legal thing, like if you're tracking, you know, you're doing DMV records and you need to, yeah, sure, make a separate table to track additional last names or additional first names, however you want to do it. Again, it's Legos. It's however you want to see it. Okay, and this is what I'm going to show you in this video. If you guys want to see how to do other last names as a separate table, post a comment down below. Let me know. Squeaky wheel gets the grease. The more people want to see something, the more I'll be likely to make a video about it. But I think, you know, if, if Deanna had multiple married names, you want to put them in here. She was a Riker and then a, a Wharf or whatever. I don't know, whatever. You can put those in there and that's how it'll show up when you print it. Totally up to you. Okay, I'll leave that there for now. All right, let's put some data in here. <laughs> data. I always, I always give a chuckle when I'm done because I got all kinds of Star Trek stuff. Rick, middle name is Dennis. Okay. Um, let's see. James, Jim, Tiberius, right? Let's do William is Will. Middle name is Thomas. Number is double, right? Um, where's Beverly Crusher? I don't think I have Beverly in here. Let's switch. Wesley, sorry, you're getting changed. This is Beverly. Nickname is Bev. Um, middle name. And yes, even I'm not this nerdy. I had to Google it. Her middle name is Cheryl. Last name Crusher. Okay, so she was born Beverly Howard. And she also had um, Picard. We'll put Picard here. All right, because they did in the alternate timeline, they got married and then divorced. So maybe she went back to Crusher. I think she was called... Captain Picard in the, or Admiral Picard in the, I don't know, I gotta watch that episode again now. <laughs> Anyways, multiple names, okay? Pretty sure Tom was Eugene. I'm doing these by memory now. Anyways, you get the point. Okay, let's go and make a query to throw all this stuff together in neat ways. All right, create query design. And yes, we want to use query fields for this. I'm going to bring in the customer table. And let's bring in just the stuff we care about. First name, last name, middle name. Wait, first name, nickname, middle name, last name, other last name. Okay, there we go. So we run it. We got that so far. Okay. All right, let's start with the um, bringing the nickname in. So I'm going to shift F2, zoom in so you can see better. We'll call this the full name. And we're going to bring in the nickname. So the nickname may or may not exist. So nickname might be null. And if it is null, we can then use null math because if we add anything to it, it'll just all turn out to be null. So it's going to be first name. Now, normally, we'd go first name and a space and last name, okay? But right in here, I want to throw in the nickname. So I'm going to say inside of parentheses, put some stuff, right? And then add on the rest of that. Now, in the middle here, whatever's inside those parentheses, if that evaluates to null, you'll just get nothing there. That's the beauty of null math. So what do I need in there? Well, I need, first I need a space, so quote space. Then I need a set of 
double quotes. So that's where the double, double quotes comes in. So I need to go double, double quotes to put a set of double quotes around like Rick, right? But I got to close that string, so I need another set of double quotes. See how that works? We got a space, and then this will evaluate to a single set of double quotes inside that string. Okay, you with me? Everybody with me? If not, go watch double, double quotes again. Okay, now after that space open quote, I'm going to add nickname. Why add? Because if I add it, if I use addition, I'm doing null math. And then all of this whole thing evaluates to null, nothing. Nothing will display there. If I use concatenation there, I'll still get the space and then the quotes in there, okay? So again, I'm gonna add after that another set of close quotes. So quote, 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 quote. Okay, get it? This will evaluate to a set of double quotes inside of a string added to nickname, added to the space, quotes up there in the front. And this whole thing will evaluate to null and won't display at all if nickname is null. Got it? Hit OK. Let's save this query as customer full name Q. Mm -hmm, Q. And run it. And there we go. There's our full name over here. Anybody who's got a nickname will now see the nickname in there. Richard, Rick, Rust, James, Jim, Kirk, so on. William, Will, Riker. If they don't, it's blank. You like? You like? Come on, you gotta like. If you liked that, give me a thumbs up right now. Go down, click on it. Hit the thumbs up. Go do it. I'm watching. Okay. All right. So let's add the other last name or names in there. Let me get rid of, let me just make this one Riker. She never really technically married Worf. Did she marry him in an alternate? There's so many alternate timelines going on in Star Trek. It's hard to keep track of who did what. Okay. But I'll just add another couple here just for the hell of it. We'll put a Smith down here and a Jones down there or whatever. Just so we have some extras. Okay. So let's put that in in parentheses after their, their current legal last name. Okay. So again, back to design view. We're going to go back into our full name here. Shift F2, zoom in. All right. We're going to add that at the end over here. Now, we want to use concatenation here. We don't want to use a plus here because if we plus that to anything after it that's null, then last name goes away too, see? Anything added to null is itself null. So we want to use concatenation here, okay? And then in parentheses, we'll put the stuff for the other names, maiden names, whatever you want to call it. So in here is where all that junk goes, okay? Now, we're going to start off with a quote, space, and then parenthesis. So it's going to be, so we're going to put a, if, if, if you have a hard time following all that, just put a set of double quotes there. Okay, so now our stuff's going to go inside of that. What do I want to actually display? I want a space and an open parenthesis. See how it gets kind of crazy and weird looking with all those other parentheses around? Okay, now right after here, I'm going to add to that other last name and then add to that Quote, close parentheses, quote. Okay, you with me? So what do we got? We got other last name. And then in front of it is going to be a space. There's a space there. It's hard to see. Let me, let me zoom the page just a little bit. There we go. That's better. Okay, we're going we're gonna to ampersand. We're going to concatenate on. And then whatever's inside of these parentheses. Okay, so here we got a, a string that's got a space and an open parenthesis. We're going to add to it other last name, which if that's null, this whole thing here evaluates to null. And then add on to the end of that a close parenthesis. Okay, ready? Here we go. And run it. And there you go. All right, Deanna Troy Riker. Beverly Bev Crusher. Howard Picard. Eh? Eh? You like that? You like that? Eh? Okay. If you're not subscribed yet, subscribe. <laughs> Let's tack on that middle name. Okay, come on back in here. Middle name is going to be just like nickname, except we don't need uh, we don't need quotes around it. So I'm going to copy this whole thing right here. Copy, and we'll copy that too. All right, and we're going to paste it right there. Let me rearrange this a little bit. Okay, all right. So we got nickname, and right here we're gonna, we want a space if there is a middle name. So get rid of those quotes. Change this to middle name. And then we don't need anything after it. Just like that. All right, so give me the nickname and 
if there is a middle name, put a space there and then the middle name. See that? We could technically do the same thing with the last name because a lot of times with this old school method, and I only show the old school concatenation method in the beginner classes, not to confuse people, because it's easier to teach them this than it is to teach them null math. But we could do the same trick with last name, right? We could put parentheses around this like that. Okay, and we can say and a space plus last name. That way, if there is no last name, you won't get that extra space in there. Then you'll have to trim it off later. So you'll get first name, ampersand, space, quotes, nickname, if a nickname exists, ampersand, space, middle name, if a middle name exists, ampersand, space, last name, if a last name exists, right? And then and the rest of it, if the other last name exists. Okay? And yes, there's a space there too. So all these names are conditional. You could, if you wanted, technically put that around first name too. But if first name is null, then that's just blank. So you don't need a space in front of it. Okay, let's see how this whole thing works now. Whoops, wrong one. And run it. There you go. There's all that. So now if we don't have Crusher here as a last name, let's, let's get rid of this. You won't see that extra space in there. See? That works out nice. Alright, let's get rid of... Okay, just already go. But I don't know why you'd do that, but okay. <laughs> it works. Alright, what if you want to see that middle name abbreviated? Well, let's make another field here. Let's just copy this guy. Copy. Come over here, paste it. Now we'll shift F2. We got to zoom in. We got to change this to full, uh, full, let's go full name abbreviated, ABBR maybe, abbreviated mid, whatever you want to call it. This is where we do need a function. We want to take the left of middle name, comma one, and then maybe add on to that a period. So you get T period, James T. Kirk, right? Run that, and there you go. Let's see. Let me shrink all this stuff up a little bit here. So we got some room. And someone's beaming in, top of the hour. Yes, I am that nerdy. Okay, there we go. So there's William Will T. Riker, James T. Kirk. Everyone thought when it was announced it was William T. Riker, they were going to do an homage to Tiberius, but they didn't. It's Thomas. Remember the episode where he got his duplicate? Okay. <laughs> Now, if you do want to flip this around and make, you know, put the married name in the middle, that's easy to do. All you'd have to do is just change the order that these appear in. And if you want to put something else in here with the other last name, like, you know, a lot of times with maiden name, you'll see, um, you'll see something like, um, let's say you put the word and knee in here like that. Right. And yeah, let's see what that looks like. Yeah, like that. Yeah, I got an extra space in there I don't need. But you see, you get the point, right? You could throw that in there if you want. All kinds of things to do. Yeah, you wouldn't need that because there's a space in front of the parentheses there. But I'm going to undo that. Let's come back out here. Undo. Put it back the way it was. And there we go. Looks better. And if you want to insist that this extra name only works with women, then you can, you know, add a gender field to your table, which I show how to do in my genealogy video. And you can um, use an if function, an immediate if function, to only have that work if gender is female. But I, I wouldn't go through that because, again, men can have changed names from their birth name as well. So that's how I would do it. Just don't put something in this field and it won't show up there. Right? Delete. Goodbye. <laughs> so there you go. Chester, I hope that answered your question. If you have any more, feel free to post them down below. Post them on my website. Um, I hope you learned something. And I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. 
Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1, and it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.